France has its cultural institutions covered when it comes to the economic losses suffered from COVID-19. But in the case of the Centre Pompidou, there are other big issues. The Parisian landmark could fully or partially close for several years, starting in 2023 as it needs major renovations. Unlike other repairs that has caused its closure in the past, this one will be the most extensive one to date, according to the institution's president. The makeover for the iconic complex built in 1977 is expected to cost over $235 million. But it could take the government months to hatch an actual plan. Let's talk to Francesco Prota, Senior Lecturer in Architecture at Oxford Brookes University. Hi, lovely to have you. Thanks a lot for joining us. So, my oh, first my question is, a potential three-year closure uh, for uh, Centre Pompidou could cost roughly $200 million. So I feel like it is a risky time for it, don't you think? Absolutely, it is. And of course, the, the pandemic has already put a blow on the building because of the, the loss they've been facing. There were millions of euros lost during the past three months. So three more years of closure could be really a problem with the Pompidou. But the truth also is that the building was structured originally to be hyper-flexible and therefore maybe there's something that can be done in that direction. Okay, what does hyper-flexible mean in this context? Hyper-flexible, well, we need to understand the building within the culture of the time, 60s and the 70s, where something called a mega-structuralist movement would be thought within architecture to solve all the issues of progressing urban design and advancements of technology. Hyperflexible means that the building was built and conceived to accommodate all sorts of events, of happenings, but also all sorts of um, issues arising mm -hmm. uh, around the city. We need to understand that the building was built in response to the 68 students' revolution that inflamed the old world during those same times. That's so it's, it's born out of a crisis, if you like. That is very interesting. I'll come back to that. But then you say that this is a hyper-flexible building and this is a time of a pandemic. So tell us why do you think it was so necessary to make all these renovations right now? Probably because the building was built as an ephemeral building. It was not supposed to last for that long, only possibly for 40 years or less. The, the time span of a ship and therefore now they decided to turn the building from an ephemeral structure into a monument. A monument is not just to architecture, but to culture overall. And possibly the political implication, implication of culture when we talk about people's freedom. Therefore, given its importance has been growing up during the times, so at the time the building was harshly opposed by Parisians, who only later learned to appreciate the building due to the immense success and unexpected success he he finally had, they decided to keep the building. And this is the first time that actually they're thinking about restructuring, not the outside, because it happened just a few years ago, but the facade. Okay, why do you think it is a successful building? It's a success, well, <laughs> depends on the viewpoint. So when the building was first uh, built, uh, it was supposed to be quite old because it was bring into completion ideas that were already 10 years old. So it didn't also engage with the future of architecture, which is digital rather than analogic. But nevertheless, it managed to embody the spirit of the time. In, in German would be the Zeitgeist, which means he meant he managed to embody the importance that culture had to play in everybody's life. And also the idea that culture finally had to be fun as opposed to the old conception of the museum, which at a time were extremely dusty and empty. Okay, so, uh, I mean, you said that it was a response to a crisis as well, and now it is a time of crisis. In that sense, what um, do you think the building should look like or what should change uh, after the renovation? Well, uh, the problem is not structural because the building has been so successful that it now has become a monument to itself, a monument to architecture, a monument to technological advancements, a monument to freedom, a monument to the political upgrades that happened at the time. And therefore, the building should be respected to what, for what it is. Um, the problem would be more about thinking how the building may avoid to collapse on itself because the number 
of uh, um, institution that the building is at a time accommodating are increasing and increasing and increasing. And even the number of the spectators that originally were supposed to be just one third of the one that the buildings accommodate daily. So what needs to be rethought is the position of the building within the heart of the city and the way in which possibly other satellite structure may support it. Okay, Francesco, why don't you tell me why it takes so long to renovate it? I mean, we're talking several years here. Okay, um, this is the first building of its kind and possibly we haven't got uh, any much of that same kind. So it was highly experimental. When the Italian architect Richard um, Renzo Piano and the British architect uh, Richard Rogers decided to build the building, they were a little bit more than students who were not expecting absolutely to win the competition. So they went for something that were absolutely outstanding and unusual for the time. Uh, this is the, the, the first building of its kind. This can be defined as an uh, inside out structure because all the structural elements of the building actually have been put on the outside. This was done in order for the building to be completely empty within the inside and therefore become flexible. That's why the name mm -hmm. hyperflexibility is. In the original building, the, the floors even were supposed to be moving up and down, but then when the, um, the, the president Pompidou died, uh, the, his successor, uh, Giscard de Scan, the stand immensely reduced the budget of the building. Therefore, the movable, the movable floors went. Still, the flexibility of the building is still there because every few years they decide to change completely the props for the exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, this also means that the most important structural parts of the building are completely outside, exposed to the elements, and nothing has been done, especially on the on the main facade for 40 years. That's yeah. why it's absolutely vital that they do something about it now. Francesco, this was really helpful. Thanks a lot.